we want to welcome you to our service at Upper Kingsclear Baptist Church. Uh, for those that will be watching the, the message over the internet, God bless you. Pray that God will take his word and touch our hearts. At the same time, I just want to make it very clear. Again, in our region, we are seeing the uptake of this pandemic. And we have been very careful as a church to make sure that we do not uh, be responsible in any way or form, jeopardizing anybody's life. So I will say very quickly, if this pandemic continues to rage on um, after Christmas, we will definitely take a different step like we've done before. Maybe just do the message right over the internet. We're still following the protocol of social distancing, masking, hand sanitizing. We're doing all that. And I want to thank you for everyone for the patience you've had in helping us to work through that. We're doing that for your safety, for our safety, for the safety of one another. Uh, we want to love our neighbor as we love ourselves, so we do not want anybody to leave the church uh, with any kind of infection as much as we can avoid it. And there's only so much we can do, and we will do all that we can just to make sure that God's people are safe. With that, I'm going to begin a word of prayer, and this will be my uh, last Christmas message. Um, hopefully not the last message, uh, but last Christmas message with the Christmas theme. So if you would just bow for a word of prayer and uh, just allow God to speak to us. Father, again, we want to thank you. We know there are many um, among us with the different ailments. We have a brother who's just resting to get his arm to be healed. Uh, we want to thank you for our sister who has come back uh, from Africa. Father, because of this pandemic, her time has been cut short. But thank you for bringing her safely to us. And then, Father, we also want to thank you for your grace as you're watching over families that have so many needs, physical uh, needs. And, Father, all the complication that's been compounded by this pandemic, we pray for your grace over your people's lives. We will not forget to say thank you for sending your only begotten Son to be our Savior. In light of that, Father, also we want to thank you the way you have kept us safe from this pandemic. That, Father, there's not one that has been affected directly. So we just pray that you'll continue to put your hand over us, around us, underneath us, within these walls as we pray for other churches that, Father, you will protect your people from this pandemic. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your goodness. Father, also we pray for our leaders. Pray that you will just give them wisdom during these very precarious times to know how to help your people. And then, Father, we also just pray that you'll watch over us. Help us not slacken in our faith in trusting you. Father, sometimes we want to take the responsibility in our own hands. Father, we know that you are the one who has set our life. You know the day, the hour, the time when you will call us home. You've called us to be ready, to be a prepared people. For this we want to thank you. Now, Father, we pray, speak to us. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Well, still we'll continue with the theme for the Christmas, seeing the face of God. Seeing the face of God. This will be my last uh, Christmas message for the year 2021 and have entitled my message, The Hope of a Faithful Servant. The Hope of a Faithful Servant. Yes, during the Advent, we had lit the candle of hope, of peace, of joy, of love, and the Christ candle, all to remind us our hope is in our Lord Jesus Christ. So I begin, the hope of a faithful servant, taken from Luke chapter 2, 
21 to 40. And I'm going to be sticking to that passage of scripture directly. I begin with the question, how patient are we? You know, I have had just no desire to go to shop during this Christmas season. Well, I remember last Christmas when you had to stand out in line during the cold days. And then with this uptake in this pandemic, I hear now you have to line up because the stores are cutting back to 50% only, can be in the store with all the social distancing and sanitizing, masking and all that. And to be honest, I'm a little bit impatient. But then I realize when I come to God's word, the Bible tells us that God is long suffering towards us, means he's patient towards us. And I'm so glad that God is patient towards me, towards you, because if he was not, I wouldn't be standing here before you. And maybe you would not be here. This is why I begin with the question, how patient are we? So let me just follow along very simply as we finish our Christmas season. Like when I say finish our Christmas season, that doesn't mean we stop celebrating the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. That's not what I'm saying. First, I want to begin with living obediently in a broken world. It will require a lot of patience to live in this broken world. How do we do that obediently? Well, let me take you to a story of two wonderful people in the Bible that many times gets overlooked during this special season. But these are the most intriguing stories and truths that come out from this portion of scripture about two very special people. Luke chapter 2 verse 21, it tells us at the end of the eight days when Jesus was circumcised, which was the Jewish custom, every male child after eight days was taken to the temple to be circumcised. We are told at the end of eight days when he was circumcised, he was called Jesus the other Hebrew translation, Joshua, Savior, one who comes to save. And remember, we had Joshua that came under Moses that led the children of Israel from the wilderness into the promised land. Here, Yeshua, the one who saves. We are told he was given the name Yeshua, the name given by the angel, before he was conceived in the womb. So not only was his gender and his name given before he was out of his mother's womb, but there we have it. So we know that Christ came from God. Everything about him was set by God. He came in the flesh because that's how God chose to send his only begotten son. He came as a baby. That's how God chose to send him the savior of the world. So what am I talking about? The hope of a faithful servant. Well, let's move on as we see. First, I want you to notice parents who believed. Mary and Joseph were given this very unique amazing, awesome, miraculous assignment from God that Mary, while still a virgin, would carry a child and would bring this baby boy to the earth that almost cost her her marriage to Joseph. But God does not leave any details unturned. God spoke to Joseph and he accepted the responsibility. We pick up the stories in Luke chapter 2, uh, verses 22. 
He tells us when the time came for their purification according to the law of Moses, they brought him up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. Verse 23, as it is written in the law of the Lord, every male child who opens the womb shall be called holy to the Lord. And to offer sacrifice according to what was said in the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. Here you get very ordinary people chosen by God for a task that is beyond our imagination at a time that was a dangerous time, a difficult time. But yet I want you to see the parents who believed God. They did all according to what God required through obedience. They first presented their child back to God, brought him to the temple. At this time, can I just say to us parents, with your children, what's the first focus with your children? I know that many of us want to raise the next Wayne Gretzky or world famous baseball player, football player, whatever. Can I say to you, if you have any inkling that you're a Christian, and God has blessed you with the child. Our number one responsibility is to bring that child to the feet of our Lord Jesus Christ. If not, you have failed on the greatest assignment God has blessed you with. We say children are a blessing, isn't it? We say children are a blessing from God because he alone is the life giver. So why is it we rob from him when we put our child in everything else and not bring them to the feet of Jesus Christ? Parents who believed God. But then I want us to move further in this story to see the hope of a faithful servant. Thirdly, we see service from a faithful, devoted servant of God. He was faithful and patient in service. This amazes me about the story of this man. Luke chapter 2 verses 25. Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. This man was righteous and devout, waiting for the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit was upon him. Now remember, Jesus hadn't promised the Holy Spirit to come to those who believed in him. But yet the Holy Spirit was still moving in the hearts of men. I want you to notice a couple of things. At this time, Simeon was a righteous and a devout man waiting for the consolation of Israel. And he tells us the Holy Spirit is upon him. This man was in service to his God and maker. Now let me tell you, it was not a good time. It was not the best of times to be in service for the Lord. The Romans were imposing all kinds of restrictions. The religious elite had turned their face away from God. They were doing their own thing in a religious way. If anybody would have been fed up and would have thrown the gauntlet down and walked away, Simeon should have been one of those people. It's just like many of us in the church of Jesus Christ. With little frustration, we throw, we throw it all away and we walk away. And then it comes to my mind, who were you serving? You see, when you are serving God, circumstances should not change your service and your devotion to him. That's what I see first in Simeon. The Bible says this man was righteous and devout. 